There have been some really good quarterbacks that have come out of Marshall over the years, but the ones that immediately come to mind are Chad Pennington and Byron Lepwich. However, one quarterback was more successful at Marshall than those two, and is one of the greatest college football quarterbacks of the last few decades, Rakeem Cato. Before we get to today's video, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to the channel. I post a lot of great college football content, so if you're a huge college football fan, then this is definitely the place for you. Also, is there another player you'd like to see a video on in the future? Drop a comment down below and it very well could be my next video. Rakeem Cato dealt with far more than anyone should have to go through as a child. He grew up in Miami, but he lived in the Liberty City section, which is widely regarded as one of the most dangerous cities in the entire county. From a young age, he was exposed to gun violence, robberies, and a whole lot more. His father was serving a 20-year prison sentence, so he never met him before. He relied on his mother for everything. She had seven children and had to work two jobs in order to support them all. She also housed three other children from the neighborhood, and they all lived in a five-bedroom house. Sadly though, Cato's mother died due to pneumonia when he was only 13 years old. She was the best human I've ever known. She did everything for all seven of her kids. She had two jobs. She was a hardworking mother, very loving. She was the queen of the house. Once the queen left, it kind of went south. But my older sister and older brother kept us strong. They were the leaders and brought us up the right way. My sister did a great job of keeping me focused. She made sure we went to school on time, dropping us off, getting us school clothes. Even if it was 50 cents or a dollar, she'd give it to us. That was good enough for me. I knew she was trying and cared. On the day of his mother's death, Cato played in the scheduled baseball game. The next day, he attended school. He knew that he had to honor his commitments and be strong, as that's what his mother would have wanted for him. I had to grow up real fast and become a man real fast. The small things my mother did for me, I had to do for myself. Clean my room, wash my clothes, make my own food, wake myself up for school, be on time for practices. I had to become a man because I knew what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. The sport that Cato loved the most was football. He played it the most while he was growing up and into high school. He knew by the time he was 6 or 7 that he was meant to be a quarterback. He had just started playing football and a coach tried to put him at wide receiver, and Rakeem hated it. After the second or third practice, Cato was throwing rocks into a lake. His coach noticed his arm and asked him to throw a few footballs. Cato didn't play wide receiver ever again. While in high school, he transferred from a struggling Miami Springs program to a state powerhouse in Miami Central. Although he was fairly small for a quarterback, weighing only 150 pounds, he was an absolute beast on the field. He led the team to the 2011 Florida 6A state title and threw for a Miami-Dade record 9,000 plus yards with 103 touchdowns. Although he was putting up record numbers, he almost got kicked off the team. After a 40-point victory, he had an emotional meltdown where he ranted at his coaches and his teammates. He was pulled at halftime because of the score, which really pissed him off. Rakeem wanted to play the whole game. The outburst from him made the coaching staff hold a meeting among the central coaches who didn't want him as their quarterback anymore. Here's what one of his coaches said about the meeting. We were in a room in Dallas and every one of those coaches voted him off the team. But I sat there and was like, no, that ain't what we are here for. We are here to save lives, not to put lives in the streets. Although he was putting up better numbers than a lot of high school quarterbacks, Cato wasn't getting recognized by colleges due to his size. He was only 6 feet tall and weighed 150 pounds. However, Marshall was made aware of Cato and was immediately interested. Doc Holliday first noticed Cato when he was a freshman in high school, but the head coach loved the fire in his eyes during practice and how he interacted with other kids. Holliday, who coached both Tim Tebow and Philip Rivers in college, called Cato the most competitive player he had ever been around. It made perfect sense that Holliday was scouting Cato, as no FBS head coach in the country had been more connected in South Florida or in Liberty City than him. He had been scouting Liberty City since 1980. In his first season at Marshall, Cato was named the starter very shortly into the season. However, it didn't take long for him to have a character issue with the team. He'd yelled coaches and teammates, and there were times he'd chuck footballs in anger. He was benched due to his outbursts. He got into an altercation with former Marshall quarterbacks coach Tony Peterson on the sideline phone, and Holiday benched him for four games. He didn't blame Cato for the outbursts. He said, here's a kid for 18 years who'd never been told when to go to bed, when to get up, when to go to school, when to eat or anything. So when we got him, he had no clue what discipline even was. The only way he was going to learn was to take something away from him that he loved, and that was football. It was basically just about my growing up and me earning their trust and about them earning my trust. As a player, I had to get on their page. So I had to be a player first and not come in thinking I know everything. 
and that is the way I come off, thinking I know everything. I had to learn that quickly, that I don't. Getting benched and having to sit out a few games was quite the eye-opener for Rakeem. During his freshman season, he finished with more than 2,000 passing yards and 15 touchdowns. Now, not All-American numbers by any means, but still very solid. Then, during his sophomore season, Rakeem Cato turned himself into a household name. In Marshall's opening game, they lost to West Virginia, but Cato had himself quite the performance. He completed more than 70% of his passes and threw for over 400 yards with two touchdowns. And he'd go on to have games like that every week throughout the course of his career. He finished his sophomore campaign with 4,200 passing yards, finishing 100 yards shy of the most in the entire country. However, Cato's 350 passing yards per game led the FBS. His 37 touchdown passes were the third most, and he led the FBS in completions with 406. During his junior season, Cato guided Marshall to their first double-digit victory season since 2002, as the Herd went 10-4, reaching its first ever Conference USA Championship game. He was named the Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year. He threw for just under 4,000 yards and had 39 touchdown passes. Against Tulsa, he threw for a career-high 456 yards with 5 touchdown passes. He also had two other games that season, in which he threw 5 touchdowns. In the Military Bowl against Maryland, Cato threw for 350 yards with 3 touchdowns touchdowns and was named the MVP of the game. His 39 touchdown passes on the season tied Chad Pennington for the most ever in a single season in Marshall history. 2014 was truly a special season for Marshall and for Cato. First off for Marshall, they won their first 11 games of the season and won the first Conference USA title in program history. They also finished ranked in the final poll for the first time in a decade. Rakeem finished the season with 3,900 passing yards and 40 touchdown passes, which was a new Marshall record. He also was a more efficient runner, rushing for 500 yards with 8 rushing touchdowns. He was a candidate for awards such as the Maxwell Award, the Walter Camp Award, the John Unitas Golden Arm Award, the Manning Award, and the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback Award. During the middle of the season, Cato threw for 200 yards and 4 touchdowns in a win over Florida International. No big deal, right? Well, with his first touchdown pass, he set an NCAA record as he threw for a touchdown in his 39th consecutive game, beating Russell Wilson's previous record. He extended that record all the way to 46 consecutive games with a touchdown pass, a record that might stand for a while unless we see an elite four-year starter in college football soon. Rakeem Cato finished his Marshall career essentially at the top of every passing category imaginable. He finished his career first in passing yards, first in completions, first in attempts, first in touchdowns, and first in total offense. He's also tied for fourth all-time in college football history with 131 passing touchdowns, his 14,079 passing yards ranked 10th all-time, and his 1,153 completions ranked 12th all-time. Although he set numerous records in college, he wasn't viewed as an NFL caliber quarterback. He didn't receive an invite to the combine, even though a high number of other quarterbacks got to go. He thought that he was more deserving, and this really pissed him off. He had to settle for his pro day at Marshall to try and impress scouts, but sadly, it just wasn't enough. The NFL draft came and went, and his name wasn't called. Cato was invited to a camp tryout with the Browns, but didn't get signed. Just like that, it looked as if his dreams of playing in the NFL were over. So, he took his talents to the CFL, with the hopes of succeeding there. However, he didn't want to go there. For Cato, he wanted that to be his absolute last resort. And unfortunately, it was. In May of 2015, Rakeem signed a two-year deal with the Montreal Alouettes. He started his first game for the Alouettes on July 3rd. He finished the game with 250 passing yards and three touchdowns. For his efforts, he was named the player of the game. That season, he played in 12 games for the Alouettes, throwing nine touchdown passes with nine interceptions. After a solid season, he was the backup quarterback in 2016. Cato was named the starter for the Week 12 matchup later in the year. However, in his first practice as the starter, he was escorted out of practice. He first started shouting at receiver Kenny Stafford on the sideline after a play went bad. He was then briefly taken to the sidelines by a special teams coordinator, Cavus Reed. When he returned, Cato started shouting at receiver Duran Carter, who was trying to calm him down. And then, he shoved Carter. Rakeem went to the far side of the field where defensive players were standing, but he was still yelling until Reed, defensive end John Bowman, and a scout escorted him out of the stadium to continue the discussion in the parking lot. It's about respect. I may not know you from a can of paint, but I'm gonna respect you every day. That's how I feel about life. I'm not gonna just take BS from anybody, I just wanna be treated as a man, nothing less. Cato also said that he felt his ability to step in and lead the offense was being questioned. 
The only thing I can do is come in and give 100% and play hard for this team. When I get sidetracked by one of my players who I'm going so hard for, who I'm ready to do anything for, it's enough. You can't take that as a quarterback. You have to stand your ground. A little over a week later, Cato once again got into a heated argument at practice with Carter, this time involving wide receiver Kenny Stafford, and Rakeem was released by the Alouettes in February of 2017. He signed with the Richmond Rough Riders of the American Arena League in November of 2017, but after one game, Cato was cut from the team. In April of 2019, he signed with the Gulf Coast Fire of the A-League. He led the Gulf Coast Fire to an undefeated season and a championship. In December of 2019, it was revealed that he had signed with the Orlando Predators of the National Arena League, but they canceled their 2020 season due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that was the latest info I was able to find on Rakeem Cato and his playing career. He doesn't post anywhere on social media, so I'm not exactly certain what he's up to now. Well, what do you remember most about Rakeem Cato's career at Marshall? Do you think his record of 46 consecutive games with a touchdown will ever be topped? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you never miss another video. If you love college football content like this, then this is definitely the place for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.